I'm Mark Allen, Mr. Saltwater Tank, coming to you on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. Rebooting and upgrading the Red Sea Max would absolutely not be complete without adding tank automation. One done properly, tank automation makes running your reef tank easier, safer, and it gives you lots of peace of mind. No matter how big or how small my tank builds are, they're always automated. Automation on the Red Sea reboot is going to be done with the Neptune Systems Apex. Now I'm going to add on components to the Apex to expand its capabilities, and I'll get to that in a minute. At its most basic level, the Apex is going to be a tank monitor and a first responder in case anything goes wrong on the Red Sea. What do those two things look like? They look like this. On the monitoring side of the equation, I'll be keeping an eye on temperature. If the tank gets too hot, over 80 degrees, or too cold, under 75 degrees, I'll get an alert. pH. Not a large concern of mine as I don't chase pH numbers, and having the capabilities to monitor pH won't hurt. When the tank needs alkalinity dosing by monitoring pH, I can detect a runaway dosing pump as a pH number outside the normal range of pH can mean trouble. Power. If an outlet is drawing too much current, I'll get an alert. For example, if a heater goes wonky. I'll also get a notification if the power goes out or if the apex goes offline. Salinity and ORP will also be monitored. Water on floor. If water is detected on the inside of the stand or behind the stand, I'll get a notification. Monitoring is great and having the capability to automatically do something about something that's wrong on the Red Sea is even better. Here's where the first responder part comes in. Temperature. If the tank gets too hot, the power to the heater will get turned off automatically. pH. If the pH is too high, the alkalinity dosing pump will get turned off automatically. Power. If an outlet is drawing too much current, that outlet will get turned off. If the salinity drops below 1.020, then the auto top off system will turn off. If water is detected on the inside of the stand or behind the stand, the automatic top off will turn off. While I could turn off the return pump as water on the floor could mean the tank is overflowing, I'm choosing to leave it on as the Red Sea has an emergency drain, so I'd rather keep the system rolling. Adding to the capabilities of the Apex, I'm adding automatic top off. As water evaporates in the tank, it's automatically going to be replaced. While the Red Sea has a built-in top off reservoir, it's gravity fed, which represents a huge risk to me. I want monitoring and control, especially of something that could overfill the sump and cause my saltwater tank to become a freshwater tank. I can also monitor the ATO remotely so I can see when and how long the ATO pump is run. This lets me know the ATO pump is actually running and working properly. Automatic water change is done through the Netsum system's dose. Water is removed and replaced in the tank in the exact same amounts throughout the day, resulting in a gentle water change that won't rock tank parameters. I like weekly 5% water changes and that equates to about 1.25 gallons a day. When the tank gets enough corals, I'll add a trident to automatically test alkalinity, calcium, and magnesium. Alkalinity, calcium, and magnesium dosing will automatically be adjusted based on trident test results. Everything I've talked about so far is Neptune Systems gear. Through the Internet of Things, the Neptune Systems Apex can communicate with non-Apex gear. This allows us freedom to choose the brand of gear we want and still have it communicate with the Apex, assuming that that gear is Apex ready. For example, the Cichet SDC 7.0 return pump can talk directly to and be controlled by the Apex. This is done all over by the local area network, not via cords or wireless adapters. I'm also using the Apex to run non-Apex gear to the four circulation pumps on the back wall of the Red Sea Max 650. The Apex will turn these pumps on and off every 30 minutes to create varying flow patterns. Note that this control is done by simply turning on and off the outlets. Not as much control as to the Internet of Things, and it's still control and automation. The Red Sea lights and the gyre pumps all have their own built-in automation as they outline in their respective shows. Automation is your friend, and I use it extensively on the Red Sea reboot. The only thing we have to do manually is feed the fish and clean the skimmer.